Hi there. Uh, a while back I decided that uh, from time to time I wanted to uh, stand at a standing desk rather than sit at my usual desk. My main machine is over there uh, with my 30 inch Dell and a couple of 20 inch um, Dells for my side monitors. I have built in some cabinets and stuff there for for that setup and then just recently I put together this standing desk which sits at about uh, 44 inches to the top which is, just seems about right for my height. My elbows basically sit on the edge of the desk. There's my main machine if anybody's interested. Uh, so for this uh, machine build I'm going to be keeping it small and simple is my, is my plan. Um, like I said, my main machine is over there, and I use that for the bulk of my work and uh, gameplay and whatnot. So I'm starting off with a mini, AT mini ITX system. This is going to be my first one. Um, I'm going to be using the Lian Li um, PCQ08 uh, case. I still wanted to be able to have um, enough room for several drives and and uh, future expansion, maybe even a gaming card at some point. Uh, so I chose uh, that case. It's one of the larger Mini ITX ones, I know, but compared to the uh, other units that I have used in the past, like my, my Silverstone over there, that's going to be significantly smaller. So so the uh, I chose that one in black. I debated between the silver and the black because I had the Silverstone uh, TJ09, I think, is my main case and um, that one I have in silver so I decided to go black this time just to mix it up a little bit. Uh, a standard LG uh, DVD burner. Um, I had this uh, Corsair HX 620 uh, power supply from a previous build that got taken apart after about a month so essentially I had this relatively new uh, power supply uh, modular, which would be nice because that case is still quite small, even though it's one of the larger ITX cases. Um, it's still going to be tight for um, cabling, so the less cables I can have in the way, the better. I went with the uh, Gigabyte H67N USB 3 um, B3 uh, LGA 1155 uh, Intel board. Um, like I said, this machine is just a secondary machine. I'm planning doing a lot of gaming and stuff on it, so uh, I just went with the dual core um, i3 uh, 2100. And uh, for an SSD, I picked up, uh, it was on special this week, um, the uh, Corsair uh, Force Series 120 gigabyte. It's a refurb drive, which I'm not so sure about, but I'll have to give it a try and see how that goes. Um, it was a good deal this week. 120 gigs was 117 bucks shipped, so I'm going to give it a go and see how that works. I know there's faster drives out there at this point, but uh, it's still relatively quick, and compared to a to a mechanical drive, I think we're definitely ahead of the game. Um, I won't be doing any overclocking, obviously, with the H67 chipset, so and or this uh, processor. So I just uh, picked up a cheapo um, Alpine 11 Pro from Arctic Cooling. For a CPU cooler, mainly to keep things a little quieter. Um, it's probably not going to cool that much better than a stock cooler, but I think the fan's a little quieter. And I've had good luck with those in the past in systems, uh, just as far as noise noise levels go. Um, for bulk storage at this point, I've got a, a couple of uh, Western Digital one terabyte drives, um, the green drives, the uh, WD uh, tens. Um, EACS models. I actually had these uh, left over from um, a server build that I have in the basement in my, in my uh, tower rack um, after an upgrade to two terabyte drives. So I'm going to be using a couple of those um, just for, for downloads and, and whatnot programs. Uh, sorry, downloads and, uh, and um, media, stuff like that. Uh, and then for RAM, I just stuck with 4 gigs um, DDR3. Uh, this is uh, 10666 PC3 DDR3. Nothing special. Honestly, it was what was on sale this week. Uh, I think I paid $22 for it. So I, you know, 
figured I'd just go with that for now, and if I need more in the future, $22 isn't that big of a deal to uh, dump and uh, pick up some more memory in the future. So, um, monitor cable, that's no big deal. I've got a uh, Dell U2311H um, IPS uh, LCD coming, 23 inch LCD. Uh, should be here next week, so hopefully um, everything will arrive and I'll be doing a build. Actually, I'll probably do the build this weekend. I'll uh, get some video of that along the way and I'll try and post that as well. So, um, oh, speakers, I forgot. Um, I've got some uh, Edifier. 2.1s that are actually again left over for another build, so those are going to be used for uh, this system. A bit of a mess because uh, they were just pulled out and put down on the uh, control panel there. So, again, I'll uh, post some videos, hopefully, of the build, maybe a few unboxings. We'll see how that goes. Hey YouTube, um, like I posted in my previous video, I'm going to be building a uh, mini ITX system to use on my um, standing height desk. Um, so I figured I'd show you some of the components that are going into the system, do a few little unboxings of some of the stuff that came in today. Alright, this is the uh, Gigabyte H67N USB 3-B3 Mini ITX board, socket 1155. Let's open it up. Let's see what's in there. Big giant warning sheet saying to use the socket 1155, not 1156. Not surprising. Uh, user manual. Looks fairly comprehensive actually. All in English, surprisingly enough. Like I said in my other uh, video, this is my first um, ITX board, so I'm. Uh, into a little new territory. I've been building building machines for a long time. Started with a 386, but that doesn't date me. But this machine it is, like I said, my first ITX, so we'll see how it goes. So, there's the board. Nice and small, compact. I like the extended heatsink on the chipset. I don't know, there's all I must to say. Uh, PCI Express 16, two DDR3 slots, four CL ATAs, 24 pin ATX power. Uh, for the back panel, we've got optical and uh, coax digital out, two HDMIs, um, VGA out, uh, four USB 2s, eSATA. Uh, gigabit uh, LAN, uh, two USB 3s, and of course the audio ports. I won't be using all that much in this build, possibly the two HDMIs. Like I said before, I've got a 23-inch uh, Dell um, U2311H uh, monitor coming in next week, so that'll be used for this system. Um, I'll be using the uh, one of the HDMIs for that. I'm debating getting a second uh, one of those monitors to have in a uh, vertical configuration. One horizontal, one vertical, if you know, for reading long documents, web pages, that sort of thing. But uh, we'll have to see how the rest of the build goes and see if I want to uh, do that. So that's the board. Let's pop open the socket once. I won't bother taking the little safety cover off until I'm actually putting the CPU in there. And that's about it. A little back plate. See what else is in the box. Some cardboard packing. A couple of uh, blue serial ATA cables with uh, clips, which I'm liking that trend. I know some of those early serial ATA cables didn't have the clips, and I always wanted to fall out. A uh, back plate for the case. A uh, multilingual installation guidebook. I knew somewhere in here there'd be something in multi-language. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, 6 Series Utility DVD from Gigabyte. I'm sure we'll just go straight to the website and download the newest drivers for that. And, yeah, pretty standard. Pretty standard stuff in the guidebook in about 47 different languages. 
And uh, that's it. So that's my um, unboxing of the uh, Gigabyte H67N-USB3-B3. Uh, looking forward to posting some more videos. Hey again YouTube, uh, I'm back with another unboxing of my mini ITX system build. Um, right now I'm going to open up the uh, Core i3 uh, 2100 LGA 1155 processor. Pretty exciting stuff. Pretty standard cheapo dual core processor nowadays. Of course a few years ago this was would have been a pretty high end amount of power you were getting here. All right. Cardboard packaging. Let's pop the heat sink out and have a look. This is one of the smaller Intel heat sinks I've seen in a while. I think the thermal TDP of this uh, processor is 65 watts. Um, pretty shallow little heat sink. Uh, no copper in the middle, just all aluminum. Extruded aluminum by the looks of it. Pretty standard Intel fan, pulse width modulation. And uh, clips. Everybody's seen the Intel uh, heat things before, I'm sure. And here's the processor tucked into the cardboard, which I'll dig out. There it is, the Intel uh, i3 2100. Let's have a look inside the little holder. Pop it out of there. There's the chip. Not too exciting, pretty standard. Uh, ready to go into the uh, Gigabyte uh, Mini ITX motherboard that I have for this build. So we'll see how that goes. Hey YouTube, uh, I decided to do another little unboxing. Um, this is the Arctic Cooling Alpine 11 Pro Revision 2. Um, I just bought this for a little lower noise solution to go with my uh, mini ITX system. Um, paired up with an Intel i3 uh, 2100 uh, CPU. Uh, so it's a nice cool CPU. I just thought that we'd uh, keep, hopefully, keep things a little quieter than the stock cooler. Crack it open. On top, we got an installation manual. Looks pretty basic. Clip connectors. Usual. All right, let's see what we got here. Some little plastic clips. See what those are for once we dig into the into the box a little more. And there's the cooler itself. Plastic cover on the bottom will pop off. Some pre pre applied um, thermal paste on there. And there is the cooler. I believe these have a pulse switch pulse pulse switch. Pulse width modulation fan. There we go. I got that right eventually. Um, looks like to be an all aluminum, all aluminum extruded cooler. I believe you just attach this black bracket using the clips to the motherboard first, and then screw down the uh, CPU heatsink with the little screws on the side, and that holds the whole unit down to the uh, to the motherboard and CPU. So we'll have to see how that fits on my uh, Gigabyte uh, Mini ITX board. Um, hopefully it doesn't run into any um, problems with clearance with regards to the RAM and and uh, any uh, parts on the motherboard. So uh, we'll post some videos of everything going together a little later. All right, see you later. Hey YouTube, um, yep, another unboxing from my uh, Mini ITX um, system build. Um, I picked up a uh, 120 gigabyte uh, Corsair Force series 
um, refurb uh, drive. It was a good deal this weekend, so I ordered it up and it just came in. I figured I'd uh, open it up and let you see uh, what a refurb Corsair uh, SSD um, looks like if you haven't uh, seen the packaging or seen how they come. Pretty plain white box marked as refurb RF2. Um, yeah, it's uh, marked for it pretty well. Uh, refurbished. 120 gigabytes solid state drive refurbished. This is the CSSD F120GB2 slash RF2, which I assume means refurbished. A little Corsair seal on this end, so let's let's cut the seal and see what's in the box. I have a feeling there's not going to be much in here. That's it. Empty box with a uh, Corsair drive. Corsair uh, FFD SSD marked as um, refurbished right on the drive itself. Um, the one catch I had with this drive is it only came with a 30 day warranty instead of the usual three year. Of course it was a pretty good deal so I was willing to uh, suck it up and take the risk and hopefully it works and we'll see how it goes. Let's uh, pop this plastic case open. And pop the drive out. It looks essentially new. There's no marks or fingerprints or anything anywhere on it that I can noticeably see. Um, so I wonder if they don't uh, recase these or, or at least clean them up pretty well. Uh, again, I'm not sure if it was a, you know, a return or, or a fixed drive or what. But um, anyhow, that's my little unboxing of the uh, Corsair CSSD F120 GB2. Uh, refurbished drive and I look forward to putting it in my mini ITX system I'm hoping to get built in the next few days hey again YouTube I'm uh, building a little mini ITX system and I picked up this uh, Mushkin uh, 4 gigabyte um, Silver, silver line DDR3 RAM kit. Um, really my only reasoning behind this was it was cheap and on sale this weekend so that's why I picked up for the system. It's not going to be a high-end uh, system so I wasn't that concerned with with uh, you know overclocking the RAM or, or uh, pushing it uh, all that much if at all. So I uh, picked up this little kit. Uh, I think I paid 22 bucks for it. So let's pop it open and have a look. I guess I'll show you the package first. Uh, pretty basic RAM package, clamshell, little instructions on the back on how to clip in RAM in case you've never done it before, in which case you probably shouldn't be building a system. Let's open it up and have a look. Yep, just a two-sided packing card. And there's the RAM itself. Mushkin Silverline PC3 10666 uh, 99924 timings one and a half volts um, pretty basic two gigabyte RAM stick I do like that uh, for a cheaper set of RAM this one actually came with a uh, little bit of plastic on there this one actually came with uh, metal heat spreaders I don't know if it's a waste of time or or whatnot but they were on there at about the same price as the the generic uh, sticks that were on sale this weekend as well so. I went with the uh, Mushkins. Two sticks, four gigs in total. Once again, that's going to be going in my mini ITX system build. Um, that's hopefully happening this weekend or early next week. So um, we'll see how that goes. Hey YouTube. Um, like I said in my previous videos, I'm going to be um, building mini ITX system in the next few days. And I picked up the Lian Li uh, MiniQ PCQ08 uh, mini ITX um, case um, in black. I think it's marked somewhere on here. In black. There we go. Black. Um, so let's open it up and have a look. I 
nice thick case. Uh, it came packed just like this. They didn't they didn't put it in another box. So thankfully the case is pretty heavy duty. I think it held up fine. Fairly thick star from Pack. It's amazingly light. I can never get used to these aluminum cases after years of dealing with steel stuff. Nice spring packing. Get rid of this stuff. comes in the bag. Installation guide in a bunch of languages. French, English, Spanish, and German by the looks of it. And an accessory sheet. Leon Lee accessory sheet. I wonder if it's Leon or Leon. I'm going to keep saying Leon. Okay, let's move that out of the way. Let's get the case itself out of the plastic. Let's get this plastic out of the way. So, there is the case. Looks nice, seem to make it through shipping all right. Um, nice aluminum finish. I have to grab a screwdriver and pop it aside and have a look. Nice venting on the side. And a 12 centimeter fan on the top. There's a 14 centimeter fan on the front. On the back, it looks fully ventilated. It's bought for an ATX power supply. Nice big vents on the bottom. And what looked to be a fairly nice rubber feet, fairly soft rubber. All right, so let's grab a screwdriver and there we go. Couldn't find my screwdriver. And let's pop open the side of this case. This case has six screws on either side that hold it on. So I'm not so sure about that, but I think they uh, serve to give the case some rigidity. So, I guess it's a necessary evil. I think I'm going to be careful I don't lose some of these screws. Two more to go. side of the case. Nice rigid aluminum. Fairly thick. A few scuffs here. I don't know if you can see them. Looks like the um, fan came loose during shipping. The front fan. It just pops in there with some little rubber grommets. I think it was bouncing around and rubbing on the inside of the case. Now I don't really care because I've never had this case open. And it didn't seem to damage anything else so that'll be fine. Put that side over here. piece of brown paper. Not sure what it's for. Maybe for absorbing moisture. Uh, yes, I think that's what it is. And so let me grab some wire cutters. Let's clip this wire tie. Remove the box. So there's the inside of the case. There's the 12 centimeter fan. Comes with a Molex to three pin connector. 
That front fan thing is loose, but I can pop that back in. Uh, four hard drive uh, bay, two hard drive bays. Um, full size optical drive on the top. And like I said, a full size ATX power supply is one of the main reasons I chose this case. I uh, don't like trying to use some proprietary size power supply or something like that. Plus, I happen to have a nice Corsair power supply around, so I wanted to use that in this build. So, let's move this case back out of the way a little bit. Let's see what comes in the box. Looks like a bunch of drive mounting screws, a bunch of standard case screws. And some wire management clips and one wire tie by the looks of it. So I guess you better not mess up and need more than one wire tie. And it looks like there is a USB connector cable, which I believe. Now, if I'm not mistaken, in the reviews I saw of this case, USB 3 front connectors, of which there are two, um, used to have a pass-through USB, but now they actually do have the uh, USB motherboard header by the looks of it on. Let's get this out of here. Just give me one second. Yes, they do actually have the USB uh, motherboard header, um, which obviously if you're converting to USB 2, you do plug into here, and then you can go into your motherboard USB 2. So that's kind of nice, unless you need to go to a motherboard that only has uh, rear USB 3s, which I think is the case with my Gigabyte, so I think you might just have to make those front uh, USB uh, Two connectors. Because yes, it doesn't really look like it's an option and it's not that connector. So, the only other thing in the box is a uh, hard drive cage bracket. If you have a long graphics card, you need to remove this, um, this hard drive uh, bay at the bottom. That's why they're separate. And then you can install this bracket on the bottom to uh, keep this um, hard drive cage more rigid. My understanding. So, I like the look of the case. It looks good. And I uh, look forward to putting this system together. I'll post some videos of uh, that as it happens. Hey everybody, I'm back with my uh, mini ITX build. I just got everything screwed back together and fired up for the first time. This is the first uh, Windows boot after it's finished its install. Hopefully that all goes well. Everything seemed to work pretty well. Um, a few small issues, but nothing nothing to speak of. Mainly to do with the, uh, the size of the case being a little tight, but nothing I couldn't work around, so that seemed to work out well. I uh, shot some time-lapse video for the setup using my little webcam here, so hopefully I'll get that one posted as well pretty quick. And uh, once I get my Dell monitor in, I think I'll do a follow-up video with the desk cleaned off, because as you can see, it's a bit of a mess from the build here. So we'll get things cleaned up and put back together in the next couple days, and uh, get some drivers and whatnot installed in Windows, and, and see how it performs. I'll get some videos posted ASAP. All right, bye-bye.
Hi and welcome to my unboxing of the uh, Dell U2311H 23 inch um, LCD monitor. Uh, this monitor uses an IPS panel, that's why I chose it. Um, it's to use with my uh, mini ITX system which you can see on uh, some of my other uh, build videos or some of my other videos, I guess I'm not building the monitor. Um, Let's go ahead and open the box. If you notice the box was a little squashed during shipping over here, so I'm hoping that uh, everything's okay inside the packaging. Let's remove the packing slip. Get that out of the way. And pretty standard Dell box. Open. Well, it looks like there's lots of styrofoam. I'm hoping it held up through the shipping problems. Let's keep it out of the way. All right. It's fighting back. Try this out. Uh, I think that's the problem. I need hemp. I'm getting in the way. Okay. There we go. Just drop the stand. Looks like it'll be okay. The panel's all in the styrofoam here, so. Let's have a look. Let's see what we've got going on. Yes, I did just drop the stand. So, let's see what's in the package. It's got a drivers and documentation CD. And setting up your monitor. Guide. Drivers. Park information guide. And a quick setting up your monitor guide. Got a DVI cable. A power cable. A USB cable for the built in hub, I would imagine. And let's unwrap the stand. If I didn't break it when I dropped it, it will be set. Looks to be intact, I think. There's the stand. Remove. So let's remove that then. Just a band to hold this in place because it's spring loaded. So there's the stand. Not sure how you release the stand to adjust it, but there must be a catch somewhere. do so.
Anyhow, let's remove the panel and see if we can attach it to the stand. So the panel is packed in styrofoam. Let's open that up. Here's the actual panel with a styrofoam cover and plastic casing on it. Let's get rid of this piece of styrofoam. The monitor also comes with a VGA cable, which I'm going to remove. For some reason, it comes with that attached, but I will be using DVI, of course. Put that off to the side as well. There's the panel. There's some of this packaging. Let's see if we can get the panel on the stand. Been a little spoiled by my 30 inch Dell. Turn this sideways so I can see what's going on. So I'm not sure how well I'll get used to this guy. There we go. Snapped in place that easy. Stand rotates. Pivots. And goes up and down. And also turns uh, to 90 degrees. Like that. Nice smooth adjustment, so I won't complain about that. Let's put it down all the way. Just so you can see it a little better. Tip it up. And let's remove this front cover, packing cover. Taped on. There we go. Kind of looks like it made it through shipping okay. As long as it works, I'll be set. That packing. And that's it. It does. It's not very nice to adjust. Easy to rotate. Looks good. All right. So that's been my unboxing of the Dell U2311 um, H monitor. I'll uh, hook it up and uh, see how it goes. Just realized I forgot to uh, show the uh, connections and ports on the monitor. so. Let's just give it a rotate. And let's start with the far side. We've got the USB ports. Oops. USB ports on the left side of the monitor. Let's rotate the monitor. And then for connections underneath, we've got two more USBs. Oops, let's get that a little closer so you can see. There we go. Two more USBs and then the uh, uh, USB to the computer, um, VGA, uh, DVI, and I believe that's a display port connector, which I'm not sure why they chose to include this array of ports, but no HDMI, but they did. Uh, a little further down, there is a power port for the uh, Dell speaker bar that you can get that clips onto these points, I think. 
And then, of course, there's the uh, power input. I think that should about cover it. Once again, that's my unboxing of the Dell U2311H um, IPS panel monitor. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm just back again with uh, a quick, quick little unboxing of the uh, Gigabyte GT240 uh, PCI Express uh, video card. This is the 1 gig DDR3 version, which I know is actually a little bit slower than the DDR5 version with 512 megabytes. But uh, I got a really good deal on this one. Um, it was $38, so I won't complain about that. Um, I bought this video card uh, for the purpose of putting into my uh, mini ITX build in my Lian Li uh, PC Q08 case. And you can check out my other videos if you want to see uh, more info on that, including a nice time lapse video of the system being built. Um, I just temporarily ran it off the um, built in uh, video in the uh, Intel chip. Uh, just to get things up and running because the uh, video card was coming in a separate shipment and didn't come in until today. Um, my Dell uh, U2311H monitor just came in uh, earlier today so I did a quick unboxing of that and that should be posted either just before or just after this video depending on the order I do it. So let's get into the Gigabyte GT240 uh, 1 gigabyte DDR3. Like I said, I know it's uh, a bit past its prime already at this point, but uh, my only real purpose for this card was, you know, to play the odd older game and whatnot. I do have my main system um, with my 30-inch down monitor and my uh, GTX 570 um, that I play most of my games on. So this is just going to be for some, oh, you know, World of Warcraft or, or some older games like, like that. Nothing too graphically intensive. And again, only at uh, 1080p on the uh, Dell monitor. So let's uh, I guess have a quick look at the box. That's the box, the GT240 from Gigabyte. Pretty standard box. There's the model number, the GVN240D3-IGI. Gotta love the names on these things. Bought this card from NCIX and uh, they shipped it very quickly, so I won't complain. So there's the inside of the box. Let's see what's in here. We've got the user's manual installation guide. Of course, a driver CD, which I won't even insert because we'll be going to NVIDIA and getting the, the newest drivers, of course. The card itself, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And absolutely nothing else. Pretty exciting. So I think we'll just put all this packaging back in the box and move that off to the side. So now for the card itself, put me on the static bag. There we go. Let's get rid of the bag. So there's the card itself. Another reason I like the idea of this card is it's supposed to be quite quiet. And my whole goal with my mini ITX system here was to keep things quiet. Um, I went with, with green drives and, and slow fans, um, Noctua fans. Um, the Corsair HX power supply they had is very quiet. So the whole system actually runs quite cool and, and quietly. So again, that's why I didn't mind the idea of this card. It is supposed to be quite quiet. I've had a GTX 460 with what looks like similar fans on it. And they ran amazingly quiet from Gigabyte as well. Of course, it had dual fans. and It was much bigger cards. But, but um, let's give this one a try and see how it goes. 
Okay, so there's the card. We've got HDMI. Here, let's remove the little plug covers. Got. Let's get it nice and close here. We've got HDMI. We've got VGA and DVI. Pretty standard. There's the back of the card. Top side of the card, heat sink doesn't stick out past the top of the card. I don't know, it should be a pretty good little card for my purposes. Again, it's uh, just to keep things quiet. I know it's not the most exciting card in the world anymore. It never really was, but um, I think it'll work in this case. So. There's my unboxing of the uh, Gigabyte GT240, uh, the 1 Gigabyte DDR3 version. The uh, 512 Meg DDR5 version actually has a different uh, shaped heatsink on it. I kind of prefer the look of this one. It's not quite as gaudy, but that doesn't really matter. It's going inside the case, never to be seen. Um, so if you like this video, uh, check out my other ones on my Mini ITX build. Alright, I thought I'd just do one last final up video to my Mini ITX system build. Um, all the parts are in and together and everything's running quite well. The Dell uh, U2311H monitor arrived today and I got it all hooked up. I've done a separate unboxing video of um, that monitor if you'd like to check that one out. Also today I got a uh, a Gigabyte NVIDIA GT240 uh, 1 Gigabyte uh, video card. Um, I found a really good deal on it so I decided to go for it and uh, put it in the system. It's um, not by far the fastest card or or the uh, best at gaming but it'll it'll do to play a few basic games and and it's a heck of a lot faster than the built-in Intel video. So um, that's in there as well. I'll try and put some uh, shots of that in a uh, slideshow video I'm planning on doing. I uh, took some photos of that, but I'm not going to pop the side off the case because that's a pain in the butt. Other than that, I've got the uh, edifier speakers back in behind the monitor. System's in place. I've been really happy with the Lian Lee case, the PC Q08 in black. Um, the build quality is really good on it. Um, everything went well. It's a little tight, but it's actually fairly roomy for a mini ITX case, I think. It just took a little bit of uh, you know, careful routing of the wires to make everything fit. And I haven't had a big chance to play around with the monitor, but from what I initially see, um, I like it. Um, it looks really nice. It's good size for working at the stand-up desk where I have it. And, you know, once again, I do have my my 30 inch uh, Dell with the 220's over there on my main system so this is just a secondary system for me and uh, I'm so far really liking the stand up desk I'm finding I don't get as stiff or as lazy and tired throughout the day standing up so who knows we might end up moving some of the bigger monitors over here eventually but for now we'll leave it like this and see how things go gives me the option of standing or sitting depending on feeling at that point and um, yeah, I think that's about it. So if you haven't watched them, go ahead and watch the other videos in this series. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.
Three, 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 three